Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of creating your own custom graphics for Contact. My name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. As I said, this is part two of three videos for creating your own custom graphics in Contact. Contact is a sampler that you can create your own instruments for, and there is a wonderful community called Piano Book where fellow samplers will share their library for you. It's a fantastic resource for you if you're looking for new sounds, but also something that you can actively contribute and become a part of which is, I think, uh, an amazing and wonderful opportunity. Part one, we explored how to create some graphics and what are the, some of the graphics that you might need, such as knobs, sliders, switches, and backgrounds. If you haven't seen that video yet, I'll leave a link to it up here so that you can take a look at that one and then join us back here for part two. This video is also using my Mellowsaw instrument, which I've released to Piano Book here. I'll leave another link up there for you if you want to check that one out. Mellowsaw is an analog synth through some tape effects and a little bit of distortion chorus to Delay, that sort of magic stuff that make analog synths so lovely to listen to. I sampled my Polybrute behind me here to create these samples and then put lots of different effects on there for you uh, to muck about with and really create something unique out of it. I obviously created some custom graphics and that's what we're looking at today. So part two is taking a look at how to take those graphics out of your graphics software and put them into contact, ready to be scripted into your instrument. We're not actually scripting them just yet, that will be part three. This will just take a look at how you can get contact to read it. That seems like a fairly straightforward thing, just export some photos, hooray, it's not quite that straightforward. Contact does need to be told what to do with these photos before you can do anything with them. So stay tuned, that's what we're looking at today. Okay, so real quick, first of all, I've been using Affinity Designer to create the graphics that I'm using today. You don't have to use Affinity Designer, of course, you can use any graphics software for this. Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop is often a popular choice, but there are plenty out there to take a look at. So how do we get them out of Affinity Designer? So how you export it would be different from every program, but it is important you know what to export and what format it needs to be in. When I export, for example, this background image that's down here, it's quite important that I export it in the right file format. One of the wonderful things about Affinity Designer is it does have an export persona. That's quite nice because you can kind of tick what ones you want to export and make them a preset for PNG. PNG is what we're requiring. And that is because there are several boards that have transparent backgrounds. JPEGs will just put a white background whenever it finds a transparent background because it doesn't know how to deal with alpha channels. This is something that's super important, so make sure you're exporting in PNG. The naming convention for it could be quite nice to you know, have something familiar, always include the name of the instrument, for example, but don't make it too long. If you make it very long, you're gonna be doing a lot of typing and scripting later, so keep it brief. Okay, so once you have your photos exported as PNGs, then you want to be able to get them into contact. This is where it gets a little bit interesting. Okay, so you can see here from my resources folder, I have a number of images. I've got my background image there, and I've also got my fader, my knobs are there as well, and the switch too. All of these are the images that I exported as PNG files. So you can see them there as .png. Perfect, we're on the right track. However, you're probably looking at this going, what the hell are these? These little TXT or text files that are accompanying each one of these images. Essentially what these are, are little text files that tell contact how to process this image. And this is what's gonna be really important. If your image doesn't have this, contact will not be able to read the image. It simply won't be available to you. With this little text file, you are gonna be able to explain to contact how you want this image to be perceived and what you can do with that image once in contact. Okay, so what is the text file? It's actually something that's pretty standard. You can find this in the KSP manual or the contact scripting program manual. Okay, so I've zoomed in a little bit here for you so you can see it. Essentially, this text is very straightforward. It's the same text for every image, no matter what this image is for, whether it's for a background or for a control, it's the same text. What we put afterwards is gonna be important. So. Essentially, each one of these is just a describer of how to treat this image once in contact. Has alpha channel was what we were talking about earlier about transparent backgrounds, often known as alpha channels. If something is transparent, we're gonna to need to say yes there. Thankfully, our background in this example, no, it's not transparent. Number of animations. Well, a background image has no animations, but our knobs and sliders will. And that's why it's important to know how many of those you've put 
or along your row. Is this a horizontal animation? Well, for a background, you can leave it as no. Same with vertical res resize and horizontal resize. It's always good to keep those as no. You don't want your pixels distorted. And the fixed top, bottom, left and right, leave them all as zero. This one, on the other hand, is for my fader. So this looks a little bit different. Yes to alpha channel for a start. We actually do have a transparent background on this one because we don't want any kind of background in the way of text later on on the back of my actual background. Number of animations, I have 51 in this one. In my knob I had 29, in my switch I have six, so I would insert those accordingly. And yes, it is a horizontal animation. You can actually stack these vertically and have a vertical image if you want and leave it as a no. In this case, I like to put everything horizontal. I just kind of, I don't know, maybe because I read left to right, I feel comfortable doing that, but it's up to you. Makes no difference whatsoever as long as you put horizontal animation yes or no accordingly. Vertical resizable and horizontal resizable, again, no in both cases, we do not want that. And all zeros for top, bottom, left and right. There's no point in needing to do those at this stage. So you can see that I've done that for every single graphic and I've labeled every text file identically to the image. The image just simply ends in .png and the text in .txt. That's important because that's how Contact finds the relevant text file. So once we've got all of these files, we're on the right track, but there's still something we need to do. Contact needs to take them on board and bring them in to this specific instrument. And to do that, we need to create a Contact Resources folder. So I have loaded up a, a simple instrument here. It's just one of the samples from my uh, Atura Polybrute that I recorded. I, I recorded four different textures. This is one series of samples from a single texture. I've already kind of thrown them in there though, and I've created and saved the instrument as Mellowsaw Demo. What I now need to do is jump into my instrument options and create a resource folder for all of these. If I jump into instrument options, and then down here, we've got instrument wallpaper, and resource container. Now you might be tempted to go instrument wallpaper. You know what? I'll switch off now. I know exactly what I'm doing. I'll just throw my wallpaper in the back there. Not quite. Definitely you can do that, but there is a huge benefit to doing it via scripting instead. It means that later on you can have different images for different scripts and different pages. So getting in the habit of doing it by script will be beneficial to you in the future with other instruments that you create. And if you do want to know how to do this and you haven't done it before, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I do release a lot of videos to help you out with this sort of thing. All right, so resource container, what do we do? There is currently nothing there. There's none created. So we're going to jump into create. It's going to ask us where would we like to do that? Now I have uh, so a particular file for this. So I'm going to jump in and I'm going to use my uh, instruments folder. I've got a contact going here, and this is where you can see my contact instrument has been saved, my .nki or native contact instrument. Now, I wanna create a native instruments contact resources folder, a .nkr. I'm gonna call it the same thing. That just helps everyone out because now I can see Mellosaur demo nki and Mellosaur demo nkr. Those two will work hand in hand. If I click save, it's going to create it in this folder, which means that later on I'll be able to move it around a lot easier. I'm going to hit save. This is important. It's going, no resource structure found. Would you like to create one? Yes. Yes, you would like to create one. And it's going to give you a, an assessment saying, this is how many files are currently in your contact, which you can see are all zeros at the moment because there's nothing in there currently. Now let me show you what's happened. If I navigate to my instruments folder, now what we're looking at is we've got my NKI, sitting there nicely, that's my instrument, my NKR, and some resource stuff. The resources folder, for example, is gonna be very useful. When I double click in here, we can see a folder for pictures. What I wanna do is copy all of those PNGs and text files into this pictures section. Once it's in here, we will then resave the resources folder and it will bring it into contact. So I'm gonna do that now, I'm gonna copy them all across. Okay, so now you can see they are all in here in my pictures folder. Now I'm gonna jump back to my contact instrument, jump again into instrument options. You'll see the resource container is now found. However, we are going to change it a little bit. We're gonna save a new one. I'm gonna hit create. I'm gonna jump in, I'm gonna call it the same thing because there's no point in calling it something different. I'm gonna jump in here and go nkr, melisoldemo.nkr and just hit save. It'll ask us if we want to replace. Yes, we do in this case, because we're going to replace the .nkr file. And in doing this, it's going to upload all four of my images with their text files, work out how they can be used, 
and save them in that .nkr file. The actual pictures folder you won't need. Once that is done, you can kind of get rid of it. Although I would keep it around until you've finished your instrument. You never know if you want to upload something else or make a change. Now comes the fun bit. We can actually have a look here and see that it says packed picture files for. It's packed four of those files into the .nkr file and they're now ready to use, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we were looking for. And now we've got those four photos in there ready for part three. Part three, we'll be scripting them in and actually using them in this instrument. If you're keen to check that one out or you're wanting to dive straight ahead, it may very well be out already. So make sure you hit subscribe and jump into my channel to have a look for it. Thank you so much for coming to the end of this video. I do hope you enjoy it. I'm really hoping that these have helped out in some way. I would love to hear about it in the comments below or a simple like just to let me know we're on the right track. Subscribe for more videos, but otherwise, catch you next time.